Pancho in. Welcome everybody to Breakfast with Bob, St. George edition. My name is Bob Babbitt. We're brought to you by Master Spa, Zion's Bank, Quintana Roo, Form Smart Swim Goggles, Clash Endurance, Premium Plus Sports, and of course our Challenge Athletes Foundation. We are at the Ironman World Championship, and of course, a gentleman who has been third twice on the podium twice the Ironman World Championship, Mr. David McNamee. How you doing, David? Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Well, thank you oh very much. Oh my God, standing <laughs> ovation. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. It's just, it's been two and a half years since we had the World Championships and, you know, it's not Kona, but it's just, it's awesome to be back. It's so good to be back, but no porridge. You're supposed to make me porridge. What's the deal? Yeah, I know, but you know, yeah. I, I messed up the time. I was supposed to be here <laughs> in, at two o'clock and it's 12 o'clock now. And you know, today, today I'm just a bit of a mess. I, I apologize. How does this course suit you? I like it. Uh, obviously, everyone knows I'm a big fan of Kona and especially the humidity of Kona and the run course there. Right. But yeah, I've been around the course here in St. George and it's spectacular. Uh, Obviously, I'd love to be in Hawaii, but I think Ironman's chosen the right course to replace it for this year. Well, it's uh, epic, right? 7,000 yeah. feet of climbing and the bike and 1,500 feet in the run. And you know, the sw they, they canceled the swim this morning, the practice swim, because there's victory at sea out there with big <laughs> waves. And so it's, it's in a lot of wind. Yeah, I think, yeah, it's like Hawaii is just a lot of wind. And yeah, obviously, there's dry heat here, but the course, yeah, it's spectacular and I think it's everyone's excited to get back racing after such a long time to fight for a world title again, and I think we have the perfect course for it this weekend. How does things change when we've had like the the fields because of COVID, because of injuries? There's I think there's what forty guys rather than seventy or eighty. Um, how does that change things the way you race this race, or does it? I don't think. Obviously, with Jan not being here, Javier Gomez, Joe Skipper. It might impact the dynamic of the race. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's sad that we don't have the defending champion here right. with Jan. But I think, to be honest, I don't really know because it's been two and a half years and you don't really know where everybody's at. And I think that's the exciting thing is like, yeah, you look through the start line and there's so many guys I've never actually raced before. Right. Never mind for a world title, just never actually raced. One of the things you were mentioning earlier was when you first made the move from ITU to Ironman, it was like, oh, it's crazy. You're way too young. Now you're seeing all these guys coming in, you know, 22, 23, 24 years old. Well, what do you think? Yeah, this is like, I moved when I was 27 and people thought it's just, people told me it's just Ironman's an old person sport. It's like mid thirties, late thirties. Right. Whereas now you look at the start line, there's 22 year olds, 23 year olds, like I think Andy, Andy Potts is racing. Yeah, he's like, 104. He could be the father to half of them. <laughs> like this is it, like it's incredible. And these guys come in and you know, these are the guys that are sort of pushing the barriers right now. Just saying, like tearing up the rule book and saying, well, I think we can do this a lot better. And you know, we'll see on Saturday, but they you know, sort they, of are. they've been sort of proving their point the last sort of 12, 18 months, to be honest. So when you, you know, you're not a, a big social media guy, but when you see, you know, hey, Christian Blumenfeld just did the bike course in 429 uh, from transition one to transition two, you're, what are you thinking? I'm just like, scratch my head a little bit. <laughs> it's incredible. Like, he's an incredible athlete, yeah. him and Gustav. And yeah, it's, to be honest, it's great to have these people in this sport to sort of, so it's sort of like a breath of fresh air. They're right. coming in and they have a whole different perspective on the sport and like how to train for it and what you can do. And I think it sort of helped push the guys that have been around for a while to sort of really reevaluate and be like, okay, we can do this better. And I think on Saturday it'll be an incredible race. And I think the winner will be a lot quicker than people expect. Really? Yeah, I think people talk about how hard this course is and I tell people, you'll need to like easily go under eight hours to win this race. And people just sort of, no, don't be silly. Wait, wait, you think someone's gonna go under eight here? Yeah, I think the winner will be sub 750, to be honest. Really? I think to win this race, you'll have to run 236, 237 marathon and ride- With 1,500 feet of climbing? Yeah, I think that's 
the standard that we're at now. I think over the last two and a half years, people have a, a lot of time to train and yes. you know train a lot for two and a half years and really reevaluate what they're doing. And yeah, I think on Saturday we'll. Yeah, I honestly think seven forty something will win this race. So you had an up close and personal view from training with Jan for a number of years uh, of what it takes to to win this race. Uh, has that changed because of what's happening now? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I think I think now there's just a lot more people who can swim, bike, and run. Like you can't have any weaknesses now. You right. can't. You. I don't think you can come out the water five minutes down and expect to bike your way to the front. Because the guys that can swim well, they can also bike well, and, and uh, well. that's changed. It's the sport has changed a lot since I got into it, and it's exciting. And yeah, I think what you need to win now is different from four or five years ago. Uh, like for example, I would say I'm in better shape from my two podiums in Hawaii. Right. But I still think it'll be very difficult for me to be in the podium on Saturday. On Saturday, it'd yeah. be hard for you to be on a podium. Yeah. I think I could have the best race of my life and end up sixth or seventh, to be honest. I think that's just the standard now. It's changed that much. Yeah. And how have you had to adapt? Uh, just by, again, reevaluating everything. Like, sort of, not rip up everything I thought I knew about the sport, but really sort of look at sort of every single detail. And as I say, I come here and I feel I'm a better athlete than when I was in the podium in 2017 and 18. Yeah. But I don't know where that will end up. <laughs> <laughs> this is the, the, and the, it's exciting, and yeah, we will see. So 2017, when you get on the podium in Kona, how did that change your world? Or did I, it? I didn't. Like, this is the thing. Everybody thinks, oh, it must be You're incredible. rolling in dough yeah. and all the sponsors, third, and everybody's... And in, yeah. This is it. I think sort of, yeah, one week later, you're sort of back home and like, Take out the garbage. Take out the garbage. <laughs> Most like more or less all my friends are like from out with triathlon and for them it's great to see you succeed, but right. it doesn't impact anything. And I think I think athletes that sort of the goal is to like win a world title or podium a world title and think that'll be the magic secret to like change my life. It's not to look at elsewhere, look outside the sport. Like you have to be enough without those world titles. Yes. Because those world titles will never sort of, it's never going to complete your life. And I think that sort of, when I was a younger guy, I always thought, you know, if you're on a podium at a world championships, life is awesome no matter what. Right. And it's not, you know, let's be honest, it's not. So, yeah. It's still the same. Yeah, life is still the same. It's incredible. It's obviously great to do well. It's something that I love to do. And right. to have a great privilege to be able to call myself a professional athlete and you know to become a world champion is a dream and I almost realized it twice and to get that close is very special but it doesn't change day-to-day -day life really <laughs> seeing Gustav and Christian being able to train together and they're like you you train with with Jan and he wins and you're you know when you get third place uh, it changes things, the dynamics between the two of you guys, because now you're a threat. You're not just a training partner. And then I don't think the following year you were, guys were able to train together. Yeah. Do you see with, when you see Christian and, and, and um, Gustav training together and continually training together, does that surprise you that they're able to do that without one of them yes going, I, I need to do this without you? Yes and no. Like, I think it all just depends on who the individual people are. Right. I think with Christian and Gustav, they're they can see the big picture better. They can be like, you know what, this guy's my biggest rival, but if we're racing together, training together, we make ourselves so much better and we can beat anyone else in the world so we can fight out between the two of us. And I think you have to look at it like Lionel, who's probably the, the biggest threat to them. Gustav offered his brother to coach him. Right. Like it's, it's incredible, it just speaks volumes to who they are as individuals. But I think it tells you that these guys are just looking to make themselves the best possible version of themselves. They don't, they aren't scared about anyone else. They just want to do what's best to make themselves the best. I also think because this has been a decade journey to try to make Norway relevant in the sport of triathlon, they've done that. 
Yeah, right. very much so. Like, uh, I raced Christian in ITU when he first started, and it was weird to see a Norwegian triathlete in racing. And then, like, to see sort of Christian, like, he wasn't very good at the start. And, right. like, if you told me, yeah, in, like, six, seven years' time, he's going to be the Olympic champion, you'd just... Uh, It'd be laughable. I'm sorry, Christian, but it'd just be funny, like <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, and yeah, so like I've raced Christian, I think only twice, and that was both ITUs, and like I kicked his ass. So right, you know, maybe I can do it again on Saturday. That would be great. Yeah, it'd be awesome. Love it, David. As always, you're always a treat to chat with, brother. Have a great one on Saturday. Thank you very much, Pacho Man. Take us out. Ooh, what color? Ooh. And breakfast with Bob. And Pancho Man, thanks everybody for tuning in. And stay tuned in. We got more interviews to come. See ya.